Dino Time is the worst dinosaur movie of all time. <laughs> you fool! You naive, unaware idiot! You thought Dino Time is the worst dinosaur movie of all time? You have seen nothing yet! Dino Time isn't even in the top 10 of worst dinosaur movies of all time. Ever since that first review, I have gained a new perspective on the layers of awfulness that lie beneath the bottom of the barrel that is dinosaur movies. Speaking of, it's really been quite some time since I last made a review. The Zoomers are already making videos about me being dead or editing me into skibbity toilet memes. I'm not dead, I'm just dead inside from the awful movies I have watched. So, I decided to ask people on Twitter what was the worst dinosaur movie they had ever seen or at least heard of. And of course some familiar faces showed up. Oh you sweet summer children, you have no idea what's coming. To recap, Dino Time is a generic kids movie with bland animation, unlikable characters and horrible dinosaur designs. But worse than that is Jurassic City, a low budget Jurassic World ripoff made by the Asylum. But worse than that is Jim Wynorski's Dinosaur Island, a low budget softcore porno that reuses puppets from Roger Corman's Carnosaur. But worse than that is Jurassic Predator, a British movie with close to no budget and bland puppets. But worse than that is Wolf Tracer's Dinosaur Island, a movie made by one maniac who doesn't know how to animate. But worse than that is Jurassic Prey, a movie made by a maniac with no budget and whose dinosaur puppets look like absolute shit. But even worse than that is Area 407, a low budget movie that uses the found footage genre as an excuse to put no effort in at all. Oh, and there was Saurian by the same guy who made Jurassic Prey, but I could never find that one on YouTube. So I guess that makes Area 407 the title holder for worst dinosaur movie of all time. At this point, the only way to get even lower than that would be to make a no budget movie that isn't just low effort, but outright offensive. So let me introduce you to a movie that none of the people in the Twitter thread mentioned. The new worst dinosaur movie of all time. A movie so careless that it started production in the middle of the 2020 COVID pandemic. Ebola Rex. Hello! -ho! The movie is called Ebola Rex. This is the most severe violation of good taste since the invention of Ebola Chan in 2014. Oh, you thought the internet's trend to fetishize everything by turning it into a waifu was a recent trend? No, they've been doing that shit for at least a decade. Finally, God take me. <laughs> I want it now. This movie was cobbled together in 2020 to capitalize on the pandemic. But I guess the word Corona Rex might cause you to get demonetized. So they went with the far more horrifying disease Ebola instead. But they have no qualms making fun of the Black Lives Matter protests. What do you expect from an edgelord director and writer who calls himself Dark Infinity? And when I say this movie was cobbled together, I mean this is clearly just a bunch of completely disconnected recordings by isolated people in quarantine, who just all collaborated on this hell spawn like it's a fucking Channel Awesome movie. Everything in this movie is filler. Everything. For example, the movie begins and ends with a pointless horror host, who even interrupts the movie at the halfway point just to annoy you even further. But I bet he can't read his victim's mind. Well, why didn't you say so? <laughs> Let's get back to the movie. You know, admitting that you are wasting people's time doesn't make it funnier. Even though one of the posters uses Dino Raul's stock T-Rex model, at least the T-Rex in the actual movie was created from scratch, even though it looks like it just based it on something like Turok. <laughs> We get like one minute of the Ebola Rex stomping around the city before we see the opening credits, which in true filler fashion are three full minutes of just stock footage of bacteria and viruses. Then we get a news report that just serves as an excuse for more cameos by people I don't know or care about. A vigilante has broken into the science lab that's been conducting some cruel experiments on the T-Rex they'd rejuvenated using stem cells. This person has injected the T-Rex with Ebola. This is so unnecessary overkill, it highlights how scummy this entire movie is. 
because spoilers, but throughout the entire movie the T-Rex is only ever gonna eat people. We're never seeing a case of it spreading its pestilence on people. It's not like Godzilla and his radiation where we actually see the repercussions. There is no reason for this T-Rex to have Ebola outside of the shock factor that they're making fun of such a horrifying disease in the first place. The T-Rex looks more like a zombie anyway, but that movie already exists. Excuse me, man. It, it, it made my face clean off. It's a giant T-Rex. How would it rip a guy's face off and keep the rest of him intact? Even some of the cameos seem low effort, like this board narrator. If you're joining us now, a massive dino being dubbed the Ebola Rex has escaped downtown and is currently on a path of annihilation. Our reporters on the ground lost connection to us. So, I don't even know what to tell you anymore. Um, just take cover, find shelter. Or how this guy apparently didn't even want to do a scream himself, so they play a stock scream instead. <laughs> and then here they're just using text to speech. The following message is transmitted by request to the Los Angeles Police Department. Genetically created dinosaur have escaped from a containment facility lab. You really couldn't find anyone to read out that part. It's not even a good text to speech program. It sounds like one of the ones you would hear in a mid 2000s YouTube video. For your safety, the following actions should be taken by all members of the public receiving this broadcast. The closest thing this movie has to a main story is the plotline between this customer support guy and his conspiracy theorist neighbor, who has a face tattoo that looks like an Among Us crewmate. After we waste another three minutes on an unfunny bit between him and some confused customer, he drives home. It's gonna be locking up pretty soon though, because of the Jurassic Lockdown. I can't really stay too much longer. Jurassic Lockdown? Jurassic Lockdown might have been a better title for this movie, but I guess it wasn't clickbaity enough. Then we watch someone walk through a park with dinosaur figures for five full minutes. Just so we can listen to the entirety of whatever indie band song they wanted to feature in this movie. And even then, they run out of song but because the scene hasn't been dragged out enough already, the guy just continues wandering around in pure silence. And then we see the Ebola Rex somehow standing so perfectly still that he tricks this guy into thinking he's a figure. Did you really care so little about this movie that you couldn't be bothered to film this scene while no people are standing in the background? Oh my god, he's eating that guy! And then they're going to eat me! Oh my god! Another quote-unquote plotline going on is this prime predator specimen stalking the Ebola Rex. Hey folks. This is Dick Steele checking in. And his name is Dick Steele, the only guy who can compete with Dick Sidney from Dino Croc. Dick oh. Sidney is so man, he has so much big dick energy. We keep cutting to this guy throughout the entire movie, and it really is just him walking around with his phone for several minutes and being like, I tasted some feces. I think I'll be on him soon. He's angry. Very, very angry. I feel like this guy had no script at all and was told to just improvise his entire dialogue. This tree was healthy just last week. Even the plants have Ebola. Okay, that is so stupid I almost chuckled. Almost. It's T-Rex feces. Those are the tiniest T-Rex feces ever. Barely a shot. I tasted some feces. But this is no ordinary Rex. Signs that this is a Rex like none we've ever seen before. Well, it's a genetically recreated T-Rex. Unless that is something you do all the time, this alone makes him already something you've never seen before. Meanwhile, the customer support guy gets abducted by his crazy neighbor. Who, who are you? Nice to meet you. I'm Natasha, an underworld doctor. <laughs> The music is too loud and I cannot hear the dialogue because of the mask. It's like I'm watching Tenet. Quit your fucking whining! Oh, fucking dinosaurs are real. Similar to Dick Steele, I feel like this conspiracy guy also had no script and had no direction other than saying fuck as much as possible. This fucking Ebola 
fucking dinosaurs. I saw a fucking Ebola Rex outside of our fucking window. By the way, this whole ordeal goes on for five minutes. Five minutes just of the guy insulting his neighbor while the camera waves around in both of their faces so much it makes you wanna throw up. Maybe this is supposed to be a stylistic choice to simulate the claustrophobic feeling of being locked in a bunker with a crazy person, but to me it feels more like they literally didn't have the space to properly place the camera and they instead like fuck it, do everything in close-ups. Told you motherfucker. <laughs> they really couldn't be bothered to film a shot where he pretends to punch him? What the fuck are you doing, pussy? I like to pretend he says that every time he wakes up. I'm assuming that on the TV is a cameo by the band who played that song earlier. Yeah, I know how these people tick. Almost an hour in we finally get something resembling a plot progression, when our protagonist cuffs and the conspiracy guy gets so paranoid that he ends up shooting him. So yeah, that's it. We basically just wasted half an hour watching this conspiracy guy mentally torturing his neighbor friend before murdering him. And again, because the scene has not filled enough time yet, the music cuts out while it awkwardly continues. What the fuck did I do? God damn. <laughs> oh, again. Oh, again, 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 God damn. Oh yeah, and by the way, Dick Steele just gets eaten by the T-Rex because he apparently thinks a gun is a close-range weapon. So his whole storyline was a waste too. But we still need to set up a sequel. Murder Hornets. They're back. Is this some sort of a Jurassic joke? You are not funny just by putting the word Jurassic in front of things. And of course, the Hornets are somehow animated with even less effort than the T-Rex. And that was Ebola Rex and holy shit, look how slow those credits are scrolling because after all the scenes in this movie that dragged on for too long, it still could only reach a 70 minute running time by stretching the credits to 8 minutes. I think it's self-evident why this movie is so bad. The concept itself is needlessly offensive and then everything in the movie itself is as scummy and low effort as possible. There is more passion contained within the dried up cum stains on a public toilet than there is within this waste of digital storage space. The advice is uh, never let anybody tell you you can't do what you in your heart know you can. Apparently, they really did make a sequel called Ebola Rex vs Murder Hornets. But like Saurians, I can't find this anywhere on YouTube. So this really leaves Ebola Rex as the worst dinosaur movie of all time. Also, the full movie of Saurians is actually on YouTube for free. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. Saurians is the worst dinosaur movie of all time. And I haven't even watched it. And now you do get to watch it, you fucking imbecile! Saurians, not to be confused with the walking simulator Saurian or the YouTube series Sauria, was made by Mark Polonia, the same guy who made the worst movies I have ever seen Jurassic Prey and Jurassic Shark 2 Aquapocalypse. Now imagine the shittiness of those movies in an era of 90s consumer grade VHS cameras and you get some truly unwatchable garbage. The video quality is so bad I'm waiting for the Life League logo to pop up in the corner any second now. At some point he re-released the movie with a new cover that features two stock image legends, Dino Rolls T-Rex and the Papu Rex, obviously neither of which show up in a movie made in 1994. This cover is more misleading than a Hero Wars ad. I love the combat. The animations are amazing. This game's awesome. I love it. Finally, God take me. The movie opens with a text definition of the word Saurian to trick you into thinking it has any valuable information to offer. Dinosauria means terrible lizards. Sauria would mean just lizards. Reports of a strange serpent-like animal have been reported in the Loch Ness. In deepest Africa, local natives tell stories of a creature called a Mimba. Mimbavi Bimbe? What? Mimbavi Bimbe? 
I would give Mark Polonia the benefit of the doubt that he just heard the word Mokile im Bembe once and never saw it in written form, but some of the pronunciations in this movie make me think that's just how people in Pennsylvania talk. This is the fossil of a small trilobite, and this looks like the tooth of a Cretaceous carnosaur, possibly a Allosaur or a Tyrannosaurus rex. These are tracks from a theropod. Mark plays our main hero, Alan. Alan. A science student who doesn't know the difference between archaeology and paleontology. If you put half your efforts into archaeology as you do trying to land a woman, you may just amount to something. And has preschool levels of geological understanding. A battle of two titans. Yeah, but this battle should have happened 40 million years ago. What's that smell? Probably rock gas. I'll have my bachelor's degree in science. Uh, sorry dude, you're not gonna get a bachelor's degree with that level of knowledge. Learning and education. Tier Zoo. All the dialogue in this movie is ADR and apparently recorded while everyone was on drugs. Hey Lynette, come here. Well, it's about time you noticed me, Mr. All Work and No Play. Well, I guess I better get back to work. Seriously, text-to-speech sounds more alive than these people. Not carcasses. These animals are alive. But how? That's incredible. Even quote-unquote action scenes like this detonation are done so unenthusiastically. Hang on! Is everyone okay? If you told me this is satire, I would believe you. Run this way. Then one guy finds a stegosaur puppet in a cave. What on earth is that? That thing's alive. My god. I'm getting out of here. Then he gets eaten by the T-Rex, whose vision is in negative colors, which on a shitty VHS rip means it's basically blind. Wait, what the fuck am I looking at? Is that a collage made in paint? Why? 15 seconds later you're just having a toy peek out behind the foliage. Why did you use that shitty computer graphic in the first place? And for the rest of the movie, Mark is just using these dinosaur hand puppets for all the scenes anyway. Here we see his stegosaur. Or maybe this is the legendary Mimba V Bimbe. And here is the T-Rex and oh my god, the poor thing has leprosy. Look at the arms. Oh come on! At least have the head not be out of focus! Fucking Family Guy made it look more believable! The gas! When we went to the cave entrance, Charlie and I could smell the heavy odor of rock gas. That could have kept them perfectly preserved, slowing their bodies down to a sort of crude hibernation. And when oxygen got into their lungs, they woke back up. It's incredible! One might even say implausible. Then Alan and his girlfriend have a bonding moment as they meet the Stegosaurus. It's just as good as Jurassic Park. The only thing that could terrify another dinosaur like that is the king of the beasts. Simba! Tyrannosaurus Rex. Then we get to see an epic fight between the T-Rex and the Stegosaurus, which is just looped footage of the hand puppets, not even in the same shot. Eventually the dinosaurs make their way into the town and with how confusingly this is edited, I guess they are attacking people while also still fighting each other? This is the one scene I showed in my previous video, because someone happened to upload it to YouTube, and this one scene encapsulates everything that sucks about this movie. Shitty editing, shitty sounds, shitty puppets, shitty music, shitty acting, shitty gore, shitty camera work. This movie even has moments where Mark did not have the footage for a reaction shot, so he's just using still images. And once again someone apparently got their face ripped off by a giant T-Rex. Do low budget movie directors really put that little thought into what a kill by their creature would actually look like? And now he's just taking news footage of an actual catastrophe and putting it into his movie. Why the fuck is there so much fire? Did the T-Rex and Stegosaur detonate a bomb? Meanwhile Alan and his girlfriend are taken hostage by a hunter looking for the dinosaurs. Oh, just in case you get any ideas about leaving. Why would you shoot the car tires? Now you are stuck here too, you fucking idiot! There's only one thing to do. They gotta be destroyed. No! You can't kill them! Why did it suddenly turn into the ending of Fallen Kingdom? Look at that! 
Wow, look at that! So, I guess the dinosaurs have been continuously fighting this entire time? Have they been locked in an eternal war? Uh. <gasps> Charlie! Yeah, I would react like that too if my best friend got shot right in front of me. Ellen stabs the hunter uh. and then the T-Rex eats him. Or gives him heads, I don't know. Chew on this, you prehistoric piece of luggage. You suck at everything, Mark. Here's what a true one-liner sounds like. Die, you dinosaur dick! Alan! Lynette! Charlie! I love that this implies they didn't bother to check his pulse and just left him there. But no shitty dinosaur movie is complete without the ending revealed that there's still a bunch of eggs left if they ever want to make a sequel. Which Mark Polonia apparently made just this year, only 29 years later. Talk about striking while the iron is hot. And that was Saurians. And even though it's not as offensive as Ebola Rex, I would say that this is the worst dinosaur movie of all time. It's got all the awful hallmarks of the other Mark Polonia films, but now with the added bonus of the medium itself being close to unwatchable. The only way this could be worse would be if it was in a language I can't even understand. Dinosaur from the Deep is everything bad about Saurians and downgraded even further by virtue of being French. Ah, the French. I have actually known about this movie for three years now, back when I first saw it on the Deep Time podcast. I immediately realized that this was gonna be the end of the line. No matter how many other movies I would review in the meantime, I always knew that Dinosaur from the Deep was eventually gonna be the one to cap off this entire downward spiral that originated from my Dino Time review. Like everyone else, the only version of the film I am watching is this VHS rip someone uploaded on YouTube. And it really adds to the experience when there are several moments where the tape looks like it's trying to commit suicide. Watching a movie of such shit quality when you don't speak French is like staring at escargot that has been vomited up by Gerard Depardieu for 75 minutes. I would really recommend to watch the Deep Time podcast commentary. This is the only way to get at least some form of enjoyment out of this. And because one of them understands French, I at least have some vague idea of what is even going on in the film. Oh my I mean, god, no. She is a cable. No. She's going what? back to her fucking bag of makeup. The movie is set in the distant future of 2004. and the death penalty has been abolished. So the plot is about transporting a criminal back in time so he can be executed at a time when the death penalty has not been abolished yet. Oh, and somehow back in time means dinosaur time, so they take a bunch of scientists there too. We start with a really long and boring chase scene after said criminal, who you can tell is a really tough gangster by his sweet ass Japanese bandana. Don't fuck with me! Fun fact, the bounty hunter who catches him is played by the director of the film, Norbert Moutier. He is such a well-known low-budget filmmaker that Jurassic Shark paid homage to him by also having a scene where the two scientists talk while walking downstairs while the audio is absolutely terrible. It's too deep. You're drilling too deep. The scientists and the bounty hunters with the criminal then enter an adorable homemade spaceship because apparently they're not traveling back in time but going to a planet in another dimension or something. For being a such a highly dangerous mission, security seems pretty lax because the wife of one of the scientists manages to sneak on board while dressed like she's going to a cocktail party. And she even brought a parasol? Why? What kind of destination was she expecting when she stowed away on a fucking spaceship? Luckily for her, this interdimensional prehistoric alien planet looks a lot like a regular forest in France. But any wilderness is still too much wilderness for a woman, you know. Ah, the French. The scientists decide they want to explore the landscape first, instead of killing the French ninja who was the only reason they did this whole time travel thing in the first place. You brought him here because he is supposedly so dangerous that you just had to find some convoluted way to execute him. But now you're just letting him walk around with his hands not even tied up? 
<laughs> then they chop his hand off. Cause I guess they didn't want to just execute him, they had to torture him first. One guy is taking pictures and the woman is even getting off on that. Well congrats, the criminal is now the most sympathetic character in the movie. At the exact 30 minutes mark we finally get our first dinosaur. And it's literally just a toy from Dino Riders. But don't worry, we do get some custom made dinosaurs too. Like holy shit, this stop motion has so many spasms I'm getting epilepsy just from looking at it. And what is this model made of? Mashed potatoes? Where's the dinosaur even in relation to the people? The sky is switching color in every shot. And they left shots of the puppeteer moving the figure in the movie. Holy shit, these puppets are even worse and uglier than the ones Mark Polonia made. I didn't even know that was physically possible. So yeah, this cacophony of garbage continues for 11 minutes. 11 minutes of just this. Every time the noises stop and the people seem to no longer run, you assume the scene is over just for the dinosaur to suddenly show up again. There's a shot where the wife is applying makeup and I thought for sure the dinosaur is gone at this point, but then it shows up again. And now it has a floppy glove too. After the dinosaur finally leaves them alone, they encounter a cave girl in the most hilariously non-authentic looking cave bikini I have ever seen. I'm not even gonna ask why there's one random human already living in this prehistoric interdimensional planet because clearly the director just wanted to live out his fetish fantasy. Now we get to the highlight of the entire movie. What you're about to see is so incredible in fact that I cannot replicate my initial reaction when watching it. Therefore, I will show you the reaction from the Deep Time podcast instead. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. What even is this what that she's holding? Oh my god. <laughs> what the f- Oh my fucking god. What the f- <laughs> I really got nothing to add. This scene has transcended cringe on a level I never thought possible. Even the video itself is so embarrassed it's trying to kill itself. This cave girl dance deserves to enter the hall of fame. How long is this gonna go on? <laughs> you know, the rest of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> then she lures our director into a cave, where it turns out the French ninja is still alive, and she is working for him for some reason. And for some reason, this cave has prison bars and a gong, and suddenly the T Rex is here. In the cell? How big is it supposed to be again? Next, the French ninja rounds up the rest of the people into the cell. She just picks up the gate like that! Are you kidding me? How is this gonna stop anyone? Yeah, exactly! Then a crew member of the spaceship shows up on a planet and immediately kills the dinosaur with a gun. Now that everyone is back on the spaceship, you would assume the movie is over, but despite all that running around in the woods, the movie still hasn't reached feature length yet. So for the final 20 minutes we get a shitty ripoff of Alien, where people get taken out one by one by a fucking hand puppet for the next 11 minutes. Nano Tyrannus has boarded the ship. Oh my god, she's saying it looks like a big cat. Really? You see something like this? You know you just left from a prehistoric planet with dinosaurs. And you think there must be some kind of cat on the spaceship? Did Norbert Moutier go through a divorce at the time? Or why is this woman written to be such an idiot? French. The hand of one guy who got bitten starts pulsating like he's infected with something. Maybe this movie was actually an Ebola Rex prequel the whole time. Maybe he's gonna spread a disease? Maybe it will lead to a famine? Well, whatever that was supposed to be, nothing is gonna happen because one scientist locks all the other people in with the dinosaur so they can all die in an incredibly embarrassing fashion. The shell-shocked survivor is found by other scientists and the movie ends with text saying he's brought into a mental asylum where nobody believes his story about dinosaurs. Even though the fucking spaceship with all the dead crew members and the still living dinosaur should still be right there, isn't it? I have no idea what was going on at the end that would have destroyed any of the evidence. Also, we never saw the French ninja again, so he is presumably still living on a dinosaur planet together with the cave girl. Well, good for him. And that was Dinosaur from the Deep. This movie is so unwatchable it should be categorized in the genre of cosmic horror. It's worse than Ebola Rex, it's even worse than Saurians. Which means after all these years I have finally found the worst 
dinosaur movie of all time. The only way this could be even worse if there was a movie that somehow combined the worst of all of these, reusing stock dinosaurs, awkward silence, bad attempts at comedy, stretching out running time with pointless dialogues, just making you oogle at girls in bikinis in place of a story, imagine if such a thing existed. Wait, don't I usually review four of these in a video? Why is this my life now? What went wrong? I just wanted to make primeval tribute videos. Bikini Girls vs Dinosaurs is the death of film as an art form. The nicest thing I can say about this movie is that I'm sure everyone had fun making it. Quite frankly, I don't even want to do my usual shtick of reviewing this movie plot beat for plot beat because it is so draining and not draining in the way you think it would be. You would think they would at least deliver on the premise of the title, a premise so simple even a softcore porno got it right. But no, this film has no nudity or even sexual jokes, so it can be enjoyed by the whole family. The sad movie equivalent to going to Hooters. Calling it a movie is admittedly a stretch. Not just because of how low budget this is, but because it's not even a full hour long. But the YouTube channel that uploaded it is called Stash Movies, so I am counting it. So to cut right to the chase, there's less than 5 minutes of Bikini Girls vs Dinosaurs in Bikini Girls vs Dinosaurs. Hell it takes 30 minutes of this 51 minute film for them to even encounter one. For the first half they are just flying around in cardboard spaceships while being chased by the underlings of the villains. Melissa McCarthy dressed like Maleficent and a guy who couldn't decide whether to cosplay as a Cyberman or a Terminator. She also has a mad scientist who does experiments on aliens that are represented by Muppets and my new sleep paralysis demons. So how do you kill time if your Bikini Girls vs Dinosaur movie cannot afford the dinosaurs and has to stay family friendly? Well of course with so many lame jokes about the girls just being dumb shallow women that it makes Robert Moutier look like a third wave feminist. It is so beautiful. Like a supermarket curry with extra barges. Yes, but a lot more deadly. A black hole that size can swallow enormous amounts of matter. Really? Even those family-sized cereal boxes? It's a black hole, Kala. It consumes everything in its path. So it could even swallow my washing machine. Wait a minute, girls. I've been thinking. Why would you want to do that? I haven't done any thinking since this morning. If you're going to understand this message, you must be a very smart civilization. We can go through here. How can you do that? You messed my hair up. And when you ran out of those jokes, resort to actual baby humor. I am pooped. Poopy poop pooped. I'm pooped too. You pooped? Oh, poopy pooped. I'm double icky. Yeah. Icky and pooped. Super ickly bickle and poopy pop pooped. Me too. I mean, poppy popped. Pip pip ping pong popped, pickly pickly pooped. Not so icky bickle though, more a kind of sniff sniff sticky ticky bickle. Everyone else in the movie is also pulling out their best stand up material, like this recording of someone who is supposed to be a NASA scientist. Are you small and green? Any of you guys furry? Please don't suck my brain out! <laughs> no, no, kidding, 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 kidding. Um, anyway, uh, Earth is the fourth planet from our sun. Sorry, third. Third planet. Um, fourth planet is Venus. How do I erase that last bit? It makes me sound kind of dumb. God, this is so unfunny. It sounds like it was written by Elon Musk. I come to make an announcement. Shadow the Hedgehog's a bitch-ass motherfucker. Like Charlie's Angels, the three bikini girls also have some controller they're working for. And this is where the cringe really shines. Work it, babies. Work it, babies. Yes, quite lovely. Do the thing again. Work it, babies. Work it, babies. 
The awkward silence of these scenes makes the cave girl dance from Dinosaur from the Deep look like Moulin Rouge in comparison. Even though I absolutely hated the music in all those previous movies, I now realize that the complete absence of a score makes watching such a boring and unfunny movie way worse. Work it! Work it! The movie does have its own theme song, and it occasionally pops up like a fucking Five Nights at Freddy's jump scare. Just the wind. Not even any yodeling. I think we should dance. Okay. Luckily, they are interrupted by the T Rex roar from Jurassic Park. <laughs> So let's get to the only thing you care about, the dinosaurs, and well, it's Dino Raul's T-Rex. Somewhat sad to see that after his death, his legacy will live on with shit like this. The bikini girls distract the T-Rex with a piece of cheese and it falls down a ravine where it can join Sharptooth and Speckle's mom. Next they encounter Dino Raul's Spinosaurus, with the sail removed. Why? If for some reason you wanted a Spinosaurus without a sail, he does have a Sukumimus model too, why would you take the Spinosaurus model and then go through the extra trouble of cutting its sail off? One girl kills him with a single slap, so I guess these bikini girls have superpowers. Superpowers they won't use when they encounter the next dinosaur, a Triceratops. What are those? Ah, those are Triceratops, believe. Wait. Why is that one not a Dino Raul model? And where are these naked oviraptors coming from? Wolf Tracer's Dinosaur Island? Models like these make me think people don't appreciate Dino Raul's models enough. The Bikini Girls escape by climbing up a ladder that somehow leads into the stratosphere and they're back in their spaceship. 40 minutes into the movie, we're already done with the story. Their conflict with the villains gets resolved and I know you don't care about that, so all I have to add is that a dinosaur book illustrated by Louis Ray makes a cameo, to remind you what a proper dinosaur actually looks like. And that was Bikini Girls vs Dinosaurs, a movie that wants to be tongue in cheek and corny but is just so lame and boring that it's not even ironically entertaining. We have looped around from modern internet trash with Ebola Rex to VHS trash with Saurians and Dinosaur from the Deep, back to modern internet trash with Bikini Girls vs Dinosaurs. By combining the unfunniness of Ebola Rex with the bored acting of Saurians and the PG voyeurism of Dinosaurs, Dinosaur from the Deep, Bikini Girls vs Dinosaurs manages to truly, definitely stand out as the worst dinosaur movie of all time. But I know that some of you are still thinking trash like this shouldn't even be illegible. These are all basically homemade videos and criticizing them for being bad is like shooting fish in a barrel. You know for a dinosaur movie to be truly awful, it would need to fail while being an actual big budget production by a major Hollywood studio. Wait a second. Pestilence. War. Famine. Death. These are the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And the apocalypse in regards to dinosaurs would refer to their extinction. And under my original tweet asking for the worst dinosaur movie of all time, one film in particular was mentioned more times than anything else. And you will see it in 65 hours. 